Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to show you a very interactive game where I will show you some useful attacking ideas which you will be able to use in your own games. Um, this comes from a game that my student Ethan and I played a couple of days ago. Again, someone rated a little bit over 1500. Um, you already know everything about Ethan. He is getting better and better every day. Um, he crossed 1400 USCF recently and he is moving up and up. And this is a very nice game that he and I played together. The time control was 15 minutes with a 10 second increment, so we expect pretty of high level stuff. And I moved this game to leeches because I like the stockfish more. So, um, this is the game. We start with e4, e6, d4, and black plays... Um, we would call it the delayed oins variation. Um, one of black's points is he wants to put a lot of pressure on this pawn. If we ever play knight c3, black can play bishop b4 and pin the knight. And if you're not familiar with uh, Black's ideas, you might get in trouble. We play knight c3, which is fine. Black continues his plan with bishop b7. We reinforce the pawn with the bishop. There is no point to play bishop c4 because we just point at nothing. Black played knight f6, putting more pressure on the pawn. And we played knight e2. The point of knight e2 is to reinforce this knight, so if black ever takes, we will take back with the knight. And there are also other additional ideas, which I will show at some point later. <clears throat> Opponent does play bishop b4. The threat is obvious. We are pinned. And so this is a threat. Um, we kick the bishop. Black doesn't have time to take yet because he will lose the bishop, so he has a choice. He can take, which he did not do. If he takes, uh, Might has a center, Black gave up his dark square bishop, Might still has two bishops, which is really good. Um, so opponent played bishop e7, but now he wasted two moves moving the bishop, and he gave us a free move. Um, we did not play the best move. The best move is pawn e5. What's the point? Well, the point is we want to open this bishop and we want to attack on the king's side. For example, if black plays the most logical move, knight d5, putting the knight in the middle of the board, we would take. Black does not want to take with a pawn because it would block his bishop. If he takes with the bishop, we play knight c3, improving our knight. Our knight might go here. Our uh, queen wants to go here, and notice that we are not worried about this pawn at all, because it only helps us, because now it is white who is attacking. Now, um, we did not do that. We played a reasonable move, we castled. Um, opponent played something weird and slow, pawn h6. Um, a lot of people do this when they don't know what to do, they'll just push the H and the A pawns. Uh, in this case, it's a terrible idea because it gives white a free move, which we now use by playing E5. Okay, our opponent plays knight E5, and again, we should play in a similar fashion, which I just showed, where we should take, and again, pawn takes blocks the bishop, um, bishop takes, now we can do knight f4, combined with the idea of queen g4, and white has a very fun position. In the game, we play knight f4 immediately, with a similar idea to bring the queen, which is also good, it's just less good. Our opponent took the knight on c3, we took back with the pawn, our opponent challenged us with d6, and here, computer wants to play queen h5, pinning the spawn, and the idea of knight e6 is very, very, very unpleasant. Uh, 
We played queen g4, which is also fine. Attacking this pawn. I wanted to notice that black cannot castle. If black castles, um, the problem is his king has no... His king has no defenders. We could play knight h5 with the threat of taking here. Also open up this bishop and black position is starting to fall apart. So black play g5, which is actually the best move, but it weakens a lot of squares. We play knight h5 and one of our ideas is actually to play pawn f4 and open our rook. <clears throat> our opponent developed the knight and we should play f4 immediately. We decide to throw in knight g7 to stop him from castling, which is reasonable, but again, our advantage is not the same. After king f8, we decide to sacrifice, which is the best move. Takes, takes, take, and we could take right away, which is actually the best move, but we played f4 which is also very, very strong because we're still attacking this, but we also want to open our rook. Our attack continues. And although black currently is up to points, um, black a lot of black pieces are not protecting the king and the king is about to be in big trouble. Our opponent played the best move. He got the king to g7 where he's pretty safe. Now maybe he can move the rook. So we grabbed another pawn. Um, we have ideas of queen g6. We Because the bishop covers. We have ideas of this. Combined with queen f7. So our pawn played knight f8. Attacking our queen. We dropped our queen back. Again, there is a world where we want to take and do this. And so our pawn played a very smart move. Queen g7. Forcing a queen trade. Remember, when you're being attacked, uh, if you can trade queens, most of the time you will be okay. The key part is it's true most of the time. It's not true all the time. In this position, even after the trade of queens, might is still better, which is what makes this game very instructive. Um, we took on g5, and the point is if he takes, we'll throw in this move. Um, <clears throat> and this is what happened. Our opponent played the best move. We do not need to take right away. We took on h6 first. He moved his king. Now we took the queen and black is up a piece. But for that piece, we currently have four pawns. Also, black king is a little bit open and black pieces can, do not coordinate really well. King e8. Black decided to step away from the discovery. But now Ethan came up with a very nice idea to take here to open yet another line to the black king. Black took back with a pawn. We brought in another piece. And now we're again ready to bring the rook. Our opponent activated his rook, hitting this pawn. The best move is rook f2 with the idea to defend but also maybe to double. We play g3 instead, just limiting this rook, which is fine. Our opponent again wants to trade because he's up. <clears throat> we avoid the trade with tempo here in the rook. Rook b8, and now <clears throat> our last piece comes into the game. Have two really nice rooks. We have two very nice bishops. And we have this very, very nice pawn. And black here made the big mistake, knight e6. He's already losing... But bishop d5 makes it worse. This is being double attacked. Um, <clears throat> you don't want to play something like king f7 to double defend because it opens up this line. And so black played the only defensive move. But the downside, of course, is now we can play h7 trying to queen. If he tries to stop us with bishop f6... There are many problems with this move. One, the rook doesn't protect this knight anymore, so we can take the knight. Two, um, we want to eliminate the bishop and queen. So move like bishop d6 is possible, also attacking the rook, attacking the bishop, trying to queen. In the game, 
Black played King F7, and then after we queened, he resigned. Um, so very nice attacking game. It shows you how important piece activity is. It shows you that sometimes it might be a good idea to sacrifice in order to get the initiative, in order to get a strong attack. I hope this game will show you how to be better attackers in chess. Thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Again, um, great job to Ethan. Um, I said many good things about you. Only sky is the limit and you will reach there. Um, and thank you all.